In order to get started, it is important to know and understand the power requirements of your cut master. Refer to the operator's manual for a more detailed list of setup instructions. First, determine what voltage your machine will be running on, 110, 230, or 460 volts. Once the voltage has been determined, make sure the proper amperage rated breaker is available. Using the chart on the rear of the machine, read the maximum current that corresponds to the voltage that you will be using. The circuit breaker should be rated at or above this maximum circuit number. Now that you have determined the voltage and power, make sure a properly rated plug and power cable is connected for the application. All Cutmaster models, other than the Cutmaster 39, have a voltage selection switch located on the rear panel. One position is for 208 and 230 volts, and the other is for 460 volts. When plugging in or removing the cable, be sure the breaker that is providing the power is in the off position. Plug the power supply into the receptacle. Once the plug is fully engaged, it is safe to turn the breaker to the on position. Note. Never insert or remove the plug from the supply voltage without first making sure the breaker is in the off position. It is now time to hook up your air supply. Thermal Dynamics recommends that you use clean, dry air from either a standard air compressor or gas cylinder. The air is connected at the rear of the power supply. Read the label on the cover to understand the pressure and flow requirements of each system. Next, determine what amperage you're going to be cutting with. Each unit has an adjustable control knob on the front panel that controls the output current of the system. For thinner gauge materials, use a lower current setting, and for thicker materials, use a higher current setting. Refer to the cut charts located in the operator's manual for specific cutting currents and recommended amperage ratings. Once the amperage has been selected, be sure to install the appropriate tip into the torch. Each tip is marked with the proper corresponding amperage. All SL60 and SL100 torches use a standard set of consumables for all current ranges. When switching current levels, the torch tip is the only consumable that requires changing. To properly install the tip, begin by pressing the electrode firmly into the torch head and snapping it into place. Next, place the start cartridge onto the torch head over the electrode. Place the tip onto the start cartridge and over the electrode. Attach the shield cup by fully tightening it over the assembled parts. After the torch parts are installed, attach the torch to the power supply. All Cutmasters come standard with the patented ATC connection, which allows instant connection or disconnection of the torch to and from the power supply. Now that the air and power are connected, it is time to turn the power supply on. After about two to four seconds, the main contactor in the unit will engage with an audible click, indicating the unit is fully powered up. The pressure LEDs on the control panel indicate the output pressure of the system. Green lights indicate acceptable pressure and red lights indicate improper pressure. To set the pressure, turn the run latch set auto pilot control switch to the set position. Adjust the regulator knob to the recommended pressure indicated on the cover label. After the air pressure is set, return the run latch set autopilot switch to the run position. Attach the work lead to the material to be cut. The system is now ready to cut. There are three general methods of cutting. Exposed tip drag cutting. Exposed tip standoff cutting. and shield cap drag cutting. Exposed tip drag cutting offers the cleanest cut with the least amount of heat effect zone and the smallest kerf width. Thermal Dynamics offers a system that is capable of cutting up to 60 amps with an exposed drag tip.